Okay, so we're going to be doing anatomy for the knee. So whenever we look at the knee, if we want to look at the patella, we always start them in extension first. So that way his leg is completely relaxed, and you can actually move the patella. So we go from side to side. We can actually take the patella and we can tilt it. So if I want to identify it, this is going to be a free-floating bone. That's going to be the patella. All other structures that we're going to find, we're going to find with the knee bent. The most important structure that we're going to find is going to be the joint line. So we find the patella. In the middle here we call the patellar tendon. I'll get back to that. And then here's our joint line. So I can feel the two grooves. Above my thumbs, I'm touching the femur. If I pull my thumbs down, I'm touching the tibia. So I'm going to go ahead and outline that joint line. This joint line runs all the way around the knee. So this separates the top from the bottom, so femur and tibia. Okay. The next bony structure that we're going to locate is called the tibial tubercle. So this is where the patellar tendon, which goes from here to here, it attaches the kneecap down to the bone. It's this little bony spot right here. This is also the site where we find Osgood Slaughters, and you'll see about that. <clears throat> okay. The last bony structure that we're going to find is going to be the head of the fibula. So. If we find the joint line, and I run my fingers to the lateral side, and then come straight down to this first big bump. This is the top of the fibula, or the head of the fibula. So I'm going to go ahead and outline that. And the fibula runs the distance of the leg all the way down here to the ankle. So we have the patella, we have the anterior joint line with the femur on top, tibia on bottom, head of the fibula, which is below the joint line, and the tibial tubercle. These are going to be all of our bony landmarks. Okay, next in our anatomy what we're going to look at is going to be the ligaments. Now, we have four major ligaments in the knee. We have the anterior cruciate and the posterior cruciate. Both are located in the center of the knee, so we really can't palpate those two areas. Um, the two collateral ligaments we can palpate. So the first one we're going to start with, we're going to start with the lateral collateral, also known as the LCL. So this one's actually a very easy structure to find. All you have to do is find the head of the fibula. So we go joint line, come down, find the head of the fibula. The LCL actually attaches to the fibula and crosses the joint line. So if I'm going to draw the LCL, it's going to be right through here. Now another way that you can actually palpate this ligament, we're going to place our finger on it, cross the knee, and you can actually rub your finger along the LCL so I can actually feel that LCL. Now for the next one, it's going to be the end. For this one, all we have to do is find the joint line. So if I come to the joint line all the way to the side, the MCL is located between the tibia and the femur. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that one in. Okay, so that's going to be our MCL. So these are the two collateral ligaments. Okay, our, our last soft tissue we're going to look at, we're going to look at the patellar tendon, we're going to look at the quadriceps and the hamstrings. So we're going to start with the patellar tendon. Very easy to find. Find the joint line, take your two fingers together until you feel this band right between your two thumbs. That band is actually the patellar tendon. It attaches from the kneecap down to the tibial tubercle, which we'll already find the Osgood Slaughters. So this red mark will be your patellar, <coughs> patellar tendon. Next we're going to look at the quadriceps. The quadriceps is made up of four muscles three of which you can palpate. So the easiest way to find these structures is to have them go into extension, have him tighten up. And you can see as he tightens up, we found our first muscle. This little band muscle, or this little rounded area, is going to be his vastus lateralis. So it's one of the quadriceps. If I come over to the medial side, and he tightens up, we can see this rounded area as well. That's going to be his VMO, or vastus medialis. Now, once we find where the two converge, they're actually going to split in half, and on top of that, we're going to find his rectus femoris. So that's the center one. Now, underneath the rectus femoris is the one muscle that we can't palpate. That is known as the vastus intermedius, so we cannot palpate that muscle. All right, two ways to find hamstring tendons. We can actually start them here, and the hamstring tendons, the hamstrings start here, and they actually come and attach on the other side of the knee. So I can have him dig his heel into the table. So he's digging his heel in, and these two bands will pop out. 
So the one that's on the lateral side is the band that goes for the biceps femoris. The two bands that are found on the medial side are going to be the semitendinosus and semimembranosus. So I'm going to go ahead and flip them over. All right, so as you can see, the bands kind of pop out, so that's a good example. This is going to be the semitendinosus and semimembranosus bands. The tendinosus is on top, okay, so that would go up this way. And then on the lateral side, we're going to have the biceps femoris. So that's the biceps femoris. And this is the semitendinosus and semimembranosus. And these are our, two, these are our three hamstring muscles that we're concerned with two types of range of motion. We're going to do active and then we're going to do passive. So active range of motion is going to be him bending his knee as far as he can go. So slide your heel towards your butt. Okay. And then he's going to come all the way out. And he's going to straighten his leg out like he's doing a quad set. So he's trying to bring his knee to the table as tight as he can. So that's going to be for active. So for passive, we're going to go ahead and bend his knee. And we can actually use the goniometer. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and place right at the, the knee joint. Then we'll widen this up with the lateral malleolus. And then we're going to go ahead and go to the greater trochanter. We can actually measure his passive range of motion. And that's going to be for range of motion for the knee. All right, first one we're going to do is going to be the quad strength testing. So we're going to go ahead and stabilize above, reach down to the bottom, have the athlete push up. That's going to be the full range of motion portion of the test. Then we'll do a break test. So we're going to push for five seconds. And we're going to take him to 45, same thing. And 90. Push back. Make sure I'm going to go ahead and test bilaterally. This is for the quadriceps hip extension strength testing. Next one's going to be for the hamstring strength test. This is the semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and the biceps femoris. So the first one's gonna be a full range of motion. I can do this bilaterally at the same time. So go ahead and pull your heels towards your butt as hard as you can. Once I get him to the top, I'm gonna to go ahead and do a break test. So don't let me pull back. Okay, take him to 45 degrees, same thing. And then I'm gonna take him to just above the table, same thing. And this is gonna be for the hamstring group strength test.